so we've uh, set up our scene in uh, part one of these tutorials. In part two, we looked at the displacement shader settings. And let's look at the surface shader and how do we get these different colors, etc. And um, we'll go look at our surface shader in the hypershade. So if you recall from our setup, we had our displacement and our surface shader. So we'll click on our surface shader here or here. <coughs> and these are the default settings that kind of come out of the box. So for the surface shader, it's kind of neat to run the ray trace re-renderer so we can really play um, kind of with the different colors, etc. So let's run that, but I'm going to take my resolution down to, let's put a shading rate back up to 5, so lower quality. Let's go 320 by 240 just so we get quicker renders. Um, so we'll just do a, a render here. So it'll just be a little bit smaller size. We'll leave our displacement um, shader settings the same. So we'll run a re-rendering session here. Move that out of the way. Move that here. So now as we move the camera around, um, we can see different things. But more importantly, we want to play with our surface shader. So ocean color. So if we make it pink, <laughs> our ocean's going to be pink. <coughs> So if we choose green, blue, etc. So this is our main ocean color settings. And uh, we can choose a blue. I like to make it a little bit dark. Um, the default is kind of kind of a blue, bl blue or green, but you can just play with that value depending on what kind of ocean you want. But again, it's nice to kind of make it quite dark. Uh, a lot of the color is going to be coming from the Fresnel, from the uh, reflection. So it's nice to have just um, kind of just kind of a subtle darker color. Uh, and then ocean color two um, is there, we can mix between um, one color and the other color. And how do we do that? Well, right below it is a little description that says FBM noise to mix between um, the two ocean colors. So by default, that's off. So if we switch that to on, uh, we'll see this kind of crazy uh, green color. I just chose colors like red and yellow. Obviously, that's not uh, going to be an ocean color, but just so we can see how the noise gets mixed between two colors. Um, we're going to do a lot more subtle effects when we're actually using it, but let's just see what that pattern looks like. So I just made red and yellow and we have our octaves here. Um, so again, that's the same as the displacement shader uh, that talks about the complexity of the fractal. So if the octaves is one, it's kind of blurrier. And if we go up to 12, uh, there's a lot more kind of complexity uh, inside those fractals. Let's go a little bit closer to take a look. So we can see the different settings. And just we can see more details when it's uh, higher, higher octaves. Let's zoom out a little bit. So that's probably too high frequency. So we have it at 0 0.01. Let's take it at 0 0.1. So that's kind of more of like what we're going for. These kind of different uh, ocean patterns. Um, again, it's yellow and red just so we can see what's going on. But if we look at a big ocean and it's all the same color, that's not really realistic. We want to kind of have these patterns in here. Maybe it's deeper water or there's like some seaweed or murkier. So that's kind of what we want to do. And if we were to actually have real colors like blue and green for our ocean, Let's make it darker. So it's a little bit harder to see. But here's kind of a nice, it's kind of blue and green. Again, this is subtler, but we can see we've got for more of a saturated blue here and then our green. And that looks better if we want to like kind of sell the scale of this big ocean. Let's move back a little bit. We don't want to go outside our dome, but now we've got these kind of colors in here. Um, let's make this a little bit darker for the green. And as if we make it darker, they kind of start blending together. So maybe it doesn't look as realistic, but I'm just going to keep the colors a little bit punchier just so we can see the difference. Here's our blue. Um, we can go darker on our blue. So you get the idea here. So we have a nice kind of mix between the two colors and um, just go ahead and play with that noise, the gain, frequency, noise time. So this is if you want to animate this, we talked about this noise time in the displacement shader. If you hook this up to 
your frame number, so right now we're on frame one and you have the animation over time, this noise will actually move a little bit. So like, let's, um, let's just do a render in here, save it. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take the noise time and we can put any value in here really. We can uh, move it by 1 or 0.1. Let's do 0.1. It'd probably be subtle. It's quite subtle, but as you go back and forth, you can see a little bit of difference. So imagine you kind of animated that slowly over time. These patterns would be changing. And again, that's just more realistic if you have waves and things going on in there. So yeah, that's the... Um, that's the uh, sort of ocean color one and two, uh, the different mixes there. And um, let's zoom in a little bit closer. Well, let's look at take a look at the air fog. So what is that? So let's run a re-render again. So this is just depth-based fog. So if you want to fade out, see how it's really saturated far in the back here? And it's, it doesn't look realistic if you want to sell scale. You want to say, oh, it's going to kind of desaturate based on this kind of mist or fog in the distance. So let's turn that on and switch because it's a switch we'll just set it to one and it overall went quite gray let's change that air fog color again to something punchy like red so we can see what's going on okay well well this kind of made everything foggy so um either let's move the camera around where the stuff in the foreground is a little bit red but you can see it gets quite red in the distance um, let's take the multiplier, the scale down and see what happens. Now see how I make it smaller? See how it's quite red in the distance, but here uh, it almost retains the same color at 0 0.001. As I rotate it up, we get a little bit more red in there. So that's kind of cool. That's a good visualizer. Uh, maybe we want to go, uh, the Maya interface won't let us go farther than, um, so we'd have to kind of script it if we wanted um, a smaller value in here. But we kind of get the idea. Uh, so now we can take off red and put kind of a gray or like a desaturated blue. Let's go desaturated blue where it's almost white or gray. Make it a little bit darker. And let's turn it on and off. So let's turn the fog off. Zero. See how it's all saturated everywhere? Now we go to one and like the farther we get, it gets kind of desaturated. So let's uh, turn it off and save the render in our viewport save it again we're, this is just a small low resolution just so we get fad, fast uh, feedback so let's turn it on and do another render and i'm going to go back and forth and um we still get a little bit in the foreground but we can you can see as before when it was when it was red back there it gets a lot more desaturated in the distance so let's go back to our re-render session and here we have index of refraction. So this will change the Fresnel reflection fall off. Uh, so let's uh, change the angle a little bit just so we see a lot more of that reflection. And what happens as we change this? Well, 1.1 is kind of our default settings and we get a nice kind of roll off. We can see into the water, uh, but we also get the reflection. If we bring that up, we just get like a wider, way bigger reflection. That's not that realistic. Um, that would be like if you want mercury or gold ocean and it's like all reflection so you could do that and vice versa you could go the other way we had 1.1 1 .1, um, but we could go 0.5 or one is uh, one is actually no reflection and 1.1 1 .1 is our default setting so go ahead and play with those um, if you have kind of creative needs that need to make different reflection fall off that's what you want and this will just amplify the reflection so if you want it really bright we just doubled it 0.5 so these are just all kind of values um, that you can play with uh, for creative control and then pow is the contrast so you can make really high contrast reflection and one is by default and then uh, our further uh, you could put a map in here um, so right now we're mixing between two colors um, for this kind of uh, the deep, uh, it's called upwelling, so the deep ocean surface. But if you had like a texture, deep map dot text, and then you set this to texture, that map doesn't exist, so it's not going to do anything. Um, but it would actually mix. You could have a, like a really complex um, map that has sand on it or any kind of pattern. 
and you could really see that pattern uh, not in the reflection but in the deep color so play with that that'll uh, that'll scale the texture and talk about the mix between um, the color and the map and then we have our end reflection gain so that's at 0.05 again that's just another parameter for our reflections and also our Fresnel gain so this is the Fresnel reflection fall off it's at 40 at 1 we'll take it down you won't even see it the default is about 40 it's cranked quite high but um, uh, that's kind of the default setting that uh, most people like and it's uh, looks most most realistic so it's gonna be set at 40 and we have a reflect ray type um, so this is for ray trace reflection so it's hitting that dome we could actually set this to gather instead of trace and what this means is that we could actually make a wider cone angle and more samples um, when it's when it's set to trace it's just really fast um, it just shoots one ray out and for water that's usually the case of what you want so let's do just one quick render where we save it here and what happens if we change it to gather um, so it's going to use a cone angle of 0 0.02 radians that's not degrees it's radians and it's going to throw out five samples so it's going to take a little bit longer to render but it'll look um, just a little bit rougher reflection so you can see that it's quite a sharp reflection in here but if we send out all those rays it's going to be kind of sample the environment a lot more and you get almost like a diffuse reflection if you go wider point one you can throw like 16 rays that's just going to take a lot longer to render um, but if you really have kind of a you want you want to simulate more uh, ice for example or just like really really rough where you don't have a shiny uh, ocean surface you can play with these settings and just make a wider cone angle and more samples uh, and that'll just take quite a lot longer to render but you'll have kind of that um, more of an ice look let's try this one So that's our render. And uh, yeah, you just don't have as sharp reflections there. Um, it's sampling uh, more of the uh, the image, um, so the HDR here. So go ahead and play, play with that. I'm going to take it back to trace. And then refract switch, that turns on ray trace refraction. So we currently don't have any objects under here, but if we did, um, if you had rocks or uh, anything down there that you wanted to refract, uh, if you have shallow water, you would turn that switch on and it would actually do refraction and you have max um, you can have the max ray distance uh, if you're using refraction so you can limit like how how uh, how long the rays are that you're tracing if you just want objects close to the surface and that you can fade those off so again if you have other objects go ahead and use that ray trace refraction and we also have white caps and the white caps will do uh, another part of this video for because there's a lot of stuff in here and we want to keep this um, to a viewable length. So we're going to skip the white caps uh, in this section. Just we'll, we'll do another tutorial video on that. And then specular controls. We don't have any specular lights in this scene. We're just ray tracing everything with the HDR. If you did and you want to have separate control over it, you can just turn the specular switch on. You have fong or glossy um, for kind of more of a glossy water reflection. And look what happens to my little sample here. Um, that's a typical Fong reflection. Now I'm going to type glossy, but keep a look at it on that highlight. It has more of a glossy water specular. So if you have lights in here, any of the lights in RenderMan, Maya, um, you want to maybe turn that on if you want certain kicks in areas. And uh, I would recommend using the glossy specular. And you have gain, roughness, sharpness, contrast. And you can even change the spec color there. So we'll turn that off here. And that's an overview of most of the parameters in our surface shader. Again, we'll save the white caps uh, for another tutorial as there's a lot of them in there. So go ahead and play with those settings.